When Jaime's family almost gets on the road, he goes out to look for a job but accidentally becomes a superhero. Jaime Reyes is a 22 years old handsome Mexican guy who just completed his law degree and returns to his hometown, Palmera City. Jaime has a traditional Mexican family who gathers at the airport to welcome him. They also take Jaime to treat him with his favorite local food. His sister Milagro keeps staring at him all the way and insists everyone tell Jaime the whole truth. His family is going to be homeless soon. The biggest weapon industry, Cord, has started a new project in their neighborhood that increased the house wages up to three times. Moreover, Jamie's dad is having a heart disease and can't work anymore. Jaime was so happy to finally return home, but his happiness disappeared in seconds. He sits outside their house with her sister and recalls their carefree childhood. Everything has changed now. Even though Jamie has a degree now, he still will not be able to get a good job anytime soon. To help his family, he starts working as a cleaner in Victoria's mansion along with his sister. Victoria is the current CEO of Cord and an extremely proud lady who is full of herself. Jamie tries to greet her, but she ignores him like he's trash. Victoria proceeds to his lounge to meet her beloved niece, Jenny. She's the daughter of the company's founder, Ted Cord. Jenny is here to ask Victoria why a banned project is restarted in the company. It's a device called One Man Army Corps, or OMAC, which can directly connect to the soldier's brain and body and turns him into a hero with strength of a thousand. Victoria doesn't bother to give an explanation to her actions and calls Jenny a worthless part of the company. It's Victoria who saved the company since Ted abandoned it. Jamie accidentally eavesdrops on the conversation and steps forward to stop Victoria from insulting the girl. He loses his job, but Jenny admires his bravery and offers to help him get a job in his company. Jamie feels like he hit the jackpot and soon all of his dreams come true. He talks to his dad about the job and he cheers him up too. Everyone is born with a purpose and Jaime still has to find his. The next day, Jaime's whole family comes to drop him at the company and wish him best of luck. Jamie informs the receptionist about his appointment with Jenny and waits for her to show up. Meanwhile, Jenny steals a staff's card and sneaks into the OMAC research room. She takes a metallic beetle from there and takes it away while hiding it in a burger box. When the staff member returns, he starts to panic at the loss and alerts the security. Jenny is the biggest suspect right now, so she gives the box to Jaime and warns him not to open it till she meets him again. Jaime takes the box home and his family starts pressuring him to open the box. Afterward, they start exploring the metal beetle and throw it here and there. Jaime tries to stop them but the beetle starts moving by itself. Suddenly the amusement turns into a nightmare when the beetle starts to crawl over Jaime's body. Afterward, it pierces into his skin and burns off all his clothes. In place of them, a strong armor builds up and covers Jaime's body. A computerized voice says that the host has been chosen and starts testing all the features of the armor. Jaime involuntarily flies high above in space and falls down like a fireball before landing down on a car. A bus is about to run over him, but the armor activates a shield that cuts the bus into two pieces. Jaime apologizes to the passengers and begs the armor to take him back home. His family is praying for his well-being, and they try to inform the police. Suddenly, Jaime falls down in the house naked. When he opens his eyes, he panics again and rushes to put on some clothes. However, he creeps out in fear on seeing the metal beetle still pierced inside his back. The family still wants to take the help from the government, but Jamie's uncle Rudy stops them from doing so. Cord can accuse them of stealing or may kill them to keep their research a top secret. Jamie believes that the only person who can help them is Jenny. He borrows his uncle's car and drives to Cord. Before he can reach there, he finds Jenny running away in panic and offers her a ride. A bunch of scary guards are following them while shooting continuously. Jamie somehow reaches back home and asks Jenny for an explanation. The metal beetle is an alien artifact called Scarab. It was given to Jenny by her dad, and it's supposed to choose its own host. This time, it has chosen Jaime. Jenny doesn't know how to remove the beetle, but her first priority is to move to a safe place. She knows such a place, but it needs a key that's resting in the cord company. The security is definitely going to be intense. Jenny apologizes to Jaime's family for unintentionally putting them in danger. But Jaime's dad suggests that everyone should gather themselves and start thinking about the solution. Rudy is a self-taught tech expert, and he has developed a device that can block the security measures at the cord company. He carries the device in his car trunk and drops Jenny and Jamie to the company. While the security cameras are hacked, Jenny steals the key and gets out of the building. They almost got away, but then Carapax stopped them. He's the first human who installed OMAC inside his body but it still needs more modifications that are not possible without Scarab. When Carapax attacks Yami, the beetle senses the danger to the host and activates the armor. 
The system tries to use the most effective weapons, but Jaime keeps stopping it from doing so. He's a peace-loving person who doesn't want to harm anyone. But the beetle keeps hitting back in defense and knocks down Carapax. It activates the sword arms and asks Jaime to kill Carapax. Jaime refuses to do so and orders to remove the swords. As soon as he gains control over his body, Carapax gets up and starts beating. He shows no mercy and gets ready to kill Jamie. Rudy can't let anyone harm his family. He drives at the attacker at full speed and asks Jenny to pull the handbrake. The heavy machine from the car trunk flies towards Carapax and throws him away while Jamie escapes with Rudy. They reach the court estate where Jenny used to live with her parents. It also has a secret base under the ground with high-tech weapons and computers. Jenny's dad Ted was also one of the hosts of the Scarab and was known as Blue Beetle. He even served the city as a superhero for a long time. Rudy gets his hands on the computer and starts reading the research Ted did on Scarab. Meanwhile, Jamie goes to take a shower. When he comes back, he sits down with Jenny and admires his family house. It is huge and filled with luxuries, but Jenny didn't have a great childhood. Her mom passed away when she was just six, and her father was indulged in his research on Scarab. He used to disappear for days until he disappeared forever and never returned home. Victoria always wanted to take over the company, but her dad gave it to Ted. But Victoria got it eventually and wants to run it in her own way. Jenny feels lighter after talking all this with Jamie and starts to like him a little. Before they can go any further, Rudy calls them downstairs to show what he found. Before Jamie, the beetle had many other hosts and activated when it sensed danger. Sometimes it listens to the host, sometimes it doesn't. But there's only one way to get rid of it, and that's dying. Jamie can't believe that he has to live with this alien parasite inside his body. All he wanted was a normal job but ended up being a prey. Jamie rushes outside to get some fresh air and Rudy follows him too. He tries to make Jamie understand that life isn't easy for anyone. Rudy also had a tough childhood as an immigrant and hardly had enough to eat, but he kept enduring everything to stay together with his family. Yep, family should be the first priority, and Jamie is lucky to have a loving family beside him. Suddenly, some cord helicopters fly by there in the direction of Jamie's home. Jamie can't stay back and jumps down the balcony to activate the armor and rushes home. The cord attacked his house and captured his family. Jaime tries to have a peaceful talk, but the guards keep shooting at him. Then they point towards his family. Jaime tells his family to run away while he throws away the guards with his sonic gun. Jaime's dad can't take the pressure anymore and gets a second heart stroke. While trying to save his family, Jaime gets distracted and gets caught by a special trap. His dad dies on spot, but he can't do anything and gets dragged away by Carapax. The house is burned down, the guardian is dead, and Jaime is captured too. The family starts to moan, but Grandma reminds them to stay strong. This is not the time to cry. It's time to buckle up and find a way to save their superboy. Jenny knows where Jamie has been taken. To get there, she takes everyone to her father's flying beetle. She also gives them some random weapons to protect themselves. Cord headquarters are inside the military fort. Grandma and Rudy will distract the forces while Jenny and Milagro will proceed to shut down the power and save Jamie. He has been tied up to a device which will transfer his data to Carapax. Afterward, he will be killed. The beetle ship lands over the fort and starts to crawl around to fight the forces. Afterwards, it creates a passage to penetrate inside the building. Jenny and Milagro reach the power source and set up the bombs. Meanwhile, Jaime is unconscious and dreams about his late dad. He advises Jaime to stay strong and fight against the odds. He has been chosen by the beetle for a reason. Jaime wakes up and breaks out of the machines. The kind lab engineer helps Jaime in getting away while he gets killed by the modified Carapax. Jaime keeps running as he can't activate his armor. Luckily, Grandma reaches there in time with her heavy guns and takes Jaime safely to the ship. His sister and Jenny are missing, so he gets back to find them. Jenny is taken away by Victoria while Milargo defends herself, but Jaime gets attacked by Carapax. He has activated his suit, but Carapax has gotten stronger than ever. He tells Jaime that his family is his weakness, and he will always be a naive mama boy. Jaime doesn't agree and attacks back. They both fight head to head for a while until Carapax knocks down the Blue Beetle. He was about to kill him when Rudy threw a stone at him out of nowhere. Carapax turns his head in anger and shoots at Rudy. Jamie can't take his family getting hurt and gets up to take revenge. He locks Carapax to the ground and activates his sword arms to kill him, but the beetle stops him. He reminds Jamie that he's not a killer. Furthermore, during the transfer process, the beetle read Carapax's memories. He was an innocent child when Victoria chose him as her lab rat. Carapax's family was killed in front of his eyes, but he couldn't do anything. After knowing his story, Jaime spares his life and tells Carapax that a family is not a weakness. It makes a person stronger. Suddenly, they notice Jenny and Victoria who landed nearby after the destruction of the ship. 
Jenny runs into Jamie's arms while Carapax proceeds to show Victoria her fate. He turns his body into self-destruction mode and takes Victoria along with him. Meanwhile, Jamie and Jenny get back on the ship. The family hugs each other and moans on the loss of one of their members. After a few days, Jenny is announced as the new CEO of Cord, while Jamie returns home with his family. The neighbors offer them food and are willing to help rebuild their house. However, there's no need to as Jenny's company will take care of that. She also bought a new car for Rudy. But she gives the most valuable possession to Jamie, and that's Jenny's heart. The biggest superpower one can have is a loving and supporting family. They aren't a weakness but an unmatchable blessing.